Well, hello, welcome again to our reading of Homer. We're reading the Odyssey 7 uh, fairly slowly through that, and we're up to the line 56. Um, now, we've had um, the mention of Arete, who is the wife of Alcinous, and Homer now is going to go on and talk about her genealogy. Uh, which I mentioned before, it's worth seeing a little table here of this. So uh, Poseidon has an affair with Perry Boyer, and the result of that affair is Nausithoos, literally one who has swift with the ship, and he has two children, Rexenor and Alcinous. And Alcinous, of course, is our king in the story, and Rexinor has one child who is a daughter, Arete, and she marries her uncle, Alcinous. And that's what Homer's going to now describe. So, Naos Sithoon men prota posedaon enosikthon, genito kai periboia, gunai konedos ariste, hoplatate thugate, Megaletoros Eurymedontos Hospoth Hupethumoisi Gigantesi Basiluen So we get an adverb here. So first of all, and we get a proton min, and there's no answer in debt, but you often get that in Homer, you'll get a men with no debt. So first of all, Poseidon, the Earth Shaker one of the epithets of Poseidon, quite a common one, because Poseidon, as well as being god of the sea, he's also a god of earthquakes, so he's a, he's a shaker of... That's one of the interpretations of this, is that he is the earth shaker. You can see the chthone root at the end. But the etymology of this is debatable. Anyway, so uh, Poseidon, the earth shaker, firstly uh, begat... Nausithoos. So he and Perry Boyer, uh, the, she was the mother, who was the best in respect of her appearance among women. So she was the best looking of all women. Hoplotate uh, Thugate, she was the youngest daughter of great hearted Eurymedon. Uh, Eurymedon. So you get Megale, uh, and the you get the um, the Ator great heartedness. So she was the daughter of great hearted Eurymedon, Hos, who um, once ruled over the haughty or arrogant, high-minded Gigantesins, dative plural from Gigas, the giants. Al homen olesi la on atastalon oleti de autos. So he um, destroyed the, well, the atalaston is reckless, the reckless host, that is the host of the giants, and he himself uh, perished. He himself perished. So notice here we get an active and this is a middle form here. So he destroyed the host and he destroyed himself. So he himself perished. Uh, te de Poseidon. Now, we're not by the way, we're, we're not told any of the details here. This is just, um, uh, we're just given this uh, story here without being told any of the details. We do read in Hesiod that the giants attempted to overthrow the gods and, of course, were themselves destroyed. Homer often does this. He will assume the audience knows the story and just give little hints. Sometimes we, the modern audience, do know the story. In other places, we've got no idea what he's talking about. We don't have any of the details that have survived. Te de Poseidon emige kai egenato paida now sitha on megathumon hos en phaexin anase. Uh, and Poseidon, so it was with her, so with that um, woman that was um, uh, Perry Boyer, 
Uh, so Poseidon mingled with her, so I had intercourse with. Mignumi is the verb here, which is often used in the sense of uh, slept with, literally mingled with from Mignumi. So Poseidon mingled with her and, uh, well, perhaps she begat a son, Nausithoon, Megathumon, great-hearted Nausithoon, one who is quick, when one who has a swift ship or who's swift with ships who ruled among the Phaeacians again we don't get an augment here from Anasso is the verb so who ruled among the Phaeacians and now Zithos de Eteken Rexon or Te Alkino on Te and uh, now Zithos bore from Tikto Rex, Rexenor and Alkinoas. Now names often in Homer have a kind of interesting meaning. Rexenor means breaker of men. From Regnumi is the verb behind this root here and the Anor is connected with Aner, Andros, a man. So breaker of men and Alkinoas, well um, the Noos of course is mind and the alke is valiant, so valiant of mind. Uh, ton men akuron iontabal agurotoxos apollon numphion en megaro mianoyen paida liponta ariten. And she, she's held over to the next line here for emphasis. So the silver bowed. Um, uh, Apollo, so Apollo of the silver bow, uh, struck him. Now that, of course, is referring to Rexinor. Uh, so while, he, so he being Acheron, well, it's something like not having produced a male. So in other words, having no son. So Apollo, the, the with the silver bow, killed him uh, before he had had a son. And when he was a Numphion, when he was a newly wedded, so a bridegroom or newly wedded, in the hall. Liponta, him having left, so it's accusative agreeing with this Tom Men here again, which is going to be balanced by the Tainde down here. So having left one, and it's feminine, one only child. This is from Oyos, meaning alone. Um, we often use in the sense of one lone child. Uh, uh, Ariti, and she's the one that's um, Odysseus is supposed to make sure he wins over before any, doing anything else. Tamed alkinos poesite akoitin kaimin etis hos utis epikthoni tieta ale. Hosai nun gergunaikes hupandrasi oikon ekusin. And Alkinoas made, again no augment, made her his akoitin, his wife. Uh, and he honoured Min for Altain, he honoured her uh, as um, no other. Uh, woman, Tietai, passive from this Tio, uh, or Tino, is honoured um, upon the earth. So we get this verb Tio here too. So he honoured her as no other woman is honoured upon the earth. So again, we get an active and we get a passive here of the same verb. Uh, no other woman, and then Hosai, as many as as many women as now, um, Ekus in Oikon, well, have a house, Hoop Andrasin, well, literally under the authority of men. Hos Kaine, Kaine Peri Keri Timetai Tekaestin. Ectephilon pidon ectal to alkinoio kailaon. 
Hoi min ration hos es orientes de decatai mythoisi hoti stekes ana astu. Uh, so thus, or in this way, she is honoured. Now the peri here is probably for perisos exceedingly. You often get this peri, sometimes with the accent on the epsilon, but this editor hasn't done that. Um, so it could mean, uh, it could go with the keri in her, around her heart, or it could just be peri in the sense of exceedingly uh, in her heart. So thus she was honoured in her heart exceedingly, Kai tekaiestin and still and also is so and still is so she was honored before and she still is uh, by uh, her dear children and the te and by Alkinois himself and by the Laon and by the peoples so by the people uh, who Fittingly, uh, looking up at her, uh, now host Theon, like a god. Uh, De decati. This is a funny form here. It's, well, it's, it's not quite clear what verb it's from. Some people think it's from Dake Numi, um, others from Decami. It's, uh, it's a fossilized form here. It's some, called, some sort of aorist perfect with present tense. It has the sense, if it's taking it, taking it with decami, it's something like to hold out one's hand, so to greet or welcome. So they looking upon her, now what makes it more complicated is the alpha here is uh, really a sonant nu, which is, becomes an alpha in this dialect. So it looks like it's third person singular, but it's actually third person plural. So it would it would have been uh, dek ntai, and it gets becomes atai. So it's a third person plural. So they welcome her muthoisi dative plural with words. So th this is a strange form. You can look up the commentaries on this, the various etymologies of this whether it's connected with date numi in the sense they point at, or they uh, show deference to her or whether it's decami they welcome or greet her with words hote whenever stakesi sub subjunctive she from stako she goes she walks ana astu up and down the city Umen gati no on ge kai aute duatai estlu. Uh, for, and then we get lots of these um, uh, particles here. We get um, we get a men ga ge kai and so on. Uh, so for she herself uh, lacks not te in any way. Uh, a Eslu must go with the not on here, uh, a noble mind. So, for she is not lacking in good sense, we might say, in, in any way, we might say in English. And then the get is in fact. So, for in fact, she is not in any way lacking in good sense, would be the sense of the line. Hoisi de you from ne si kai andrasi ne kia lue. Um, and uh, now this is um, for those whom she might think well so for those um, to whom she is well disposed even to men lue nekia this is neuter plural from nekos strife or argument so it's she sorts out she solves uh, stripes, so she sorts out problems for those to whom she is well disposed, even for men. Slightly tricky line, that one. A can toy cane gefila von eis any thulo. 
el pore toi epe to filus idein kai hikesta ikikestai oikon es hupso hups orophon kai sen es patrida gaie uh, but if um, now this is here again this is um, Athena in the guise of this girl is she's still speaking to Odysseus so he says if and we get ken for an with the subjunctive so uh, ken is like an in Attic with the subjunctive uh, so if uh, she might if that woman might think dear things in fact toy for you in her thumos in her heart so if she's well disposed to you uh, uh, understand there is el pore there is the hope this is another form of elpis it's a, just a cognate with elpis there is hope there is an expectation perhaps afterwards uh, toy for you idein with a repeated epsilon for the sake of meter this is the infinitive here to see your friends Kai Hikestai from, from um, Hiknaemai and to come into your high roofed house Hupsos plus Orophos which is the word for roof into your high roofed house and into your paternal land so into your fatherland Hos Arafonesas Apibe Gunai Kopis Athene Ponton ep atrugeton, lipe de skerien eratenen, uh, hiketo de es marathona kai uru aguian athene, duni arektheos pukinon domon. So, thus speaking, then, so we get a little error here, so then. Having said all this, having spoken thus, uh, grey-eyed Athena went off from Apobino into the unwearying sea. Well, this one again is one of these epithets that's been debated. I just translate it generally as unwearying, but it's got other meanings as well, other possible et etymologies. I'll leave you to look up the commentaries on that one, into the unwearying sea. And she left from Lapo, no augment again, uh, beautiful Scheria, and this is the land that they're, uh, that they're in, and she went into Marathon. Now this is interesting here, it's the only mention of Marathon in Homer, the plain of Marathon. She went into Marathon and into Athens. Now normally it's Athenae, so the Athenas here. Uh, this is, I think, uh, it's almost elsewhere, always in the plural, but here it has to refer to Athens. Um, and it's Euro uh, Aguian, it's um, with broad um, ploughed fields. So with its broad fields. Uh, and she went into the Pukinon Domon. Well, Pukinos, again, a range of meanings, perhaps strong here, into the strong house of Erechtheus. So this strong house of Erechtheus was later erected as a temple known as the Erechtheum, of course, on the Acropolis, dedicated to the joint worship of Athena and Erechtheus. Uh, here we're looking at it more, perhaps, from the Mycenaean uh, period viewpoint. Uh, so she went into the strong house of Erechtheus, Atta Odysseus al Kinoo pros domat ia cluta. But, and we get a nice arte, a nice strong but. So she's done this thing, but Odysseus ia was going. This again is from um, Amy Ibo, the Amy. Um, with the circumflex on the first syllable, meaning I, I will go, but it's just use of going, and the, the root of it is I, and this is just a past tense here. Uh, so he uh, began to go, so he headed off 
to the famous houses of Alkinoas, go to the famous house of Alkinoas. Pola de Hoy Care, we'll keep that in our heads, Pola de Hoy Care, uh, Hoy Mine Istameno, Princalcion Udon Ikestai. So, um, now the care we saw before is his, um, well, his heart perhaps. Uh, so the heart, his heart or mine, pondered, and then we've got a hoy back in the previous page going with the histamino. For him standing there, his heart was pondering polar many things. Could be adverb or muchly or many things. Uh, prin, Alkion, Ahoron, Kesthai, before he went on the bronze threshold. So before he went on the bronze threshold, that is the entrance way. Hostega heliu aigle pelin a selenes doma cap hops erefes megoletoros al kinoyo. For uh, so hose here with that accent it's like to so I think we've got to supply well there, there's the pelin so uh, this is from pelamai it's often used just like the verb to be so there was a gleam and we go down to here about the high uh, roofed house of great hearted Alcanoas like that of the sun and of the moon. So a slightly tricky line there. So I understand, well, I understand that we get the pelin. There was a gleam about uh, the, so eye is a, a um, beam of light. So there was a beam of light or a, a gleam about the high roofed house uh, of great hearted Alcanoas, like that of the sun and of the Selene of the Moon. And that is the next section of Book 7.